Hi, this is Jonathan Hart, and this is the third and final video on the strategy pattern. Um, so in the previous videos, we started with a company that uh, worked only with cars and trucks, and then we um, the company came back later in time and said, we're now dealing with aircraft. Uh, we need you to extend our program to deal with aircraft. And so what we did is we clearly separated um, our object model from all the concerns with how the aircraft go. Uh, and that's by creating this family of algorithm objects um, to encapsulate the Go algorithm. And then our object model defers to an iGo object. So any object that inherits vehicle inherently has a Go method. And this calls uh, a protected iGo object that is defined in our constructors. So we'll run this. So you can see when we create a new car in our constructor, we assign it the automobile go algorithm. With the truck, it's the same thing. We get a new automobile go algorithm. helicopter gets the helicopter go algorithm and the jet gets a jet go algorithm so now when we call the go method it calls the implementation that's in your abstract class and defers to your go object and so here is your implementation uh, and that executes it's the same for every object each object calls this base go this base go method which in turn calls the go algorithms go method and the results were the same as we got in our initial video um, now all of this seems like a, um, a lot of work and a lot of extra code to really not uh, accomplish much of anything new but the real advantage to this is the fact that we now have a very small atomic objects uh, and the example that I always give is can you imagine if you're driving your car and your car got a flat tire and you took your car to the tire shop and said hey I have a flat tire can you please fix my tire and they come back and they say well sure uh, but we got to replace the entire axle um, you would be pretty mad that you have to replace this huge piece of functionality just for a flat tire and that's exactly the trap that we fall into with software um, we design objects that are too big, we have objects that do too many different things, and when something unexpected occurs and it comes time to uh, maintain that object or update it or change it, um, the effects are very far felt. You can't just change the tire, you'd have to replace the entire axle. Um, and software should not be any different. Software you should always have, uh, when appropriate at least, um, as c clear and concise and as small of an object as possible. An object should only be as big as it needs to be. Um, so let me show you the, um, the flexibility of this. So now if we wanted to further extend this application and say, okay, um, we want to add new functionality where a truck can tow um, a trailer or tow whatever it is you want to tow with your truck. Um, to extend the truck object, um, we no longer have to uh, modify our object structure. Um, believe it or not, we can add the towing ability to the truck without changing this definition. Um, and let me show you how we do that. We'll add a new algorithm object called towing algorithm. Oops. Oh. And we'll give it a go method. And we'll write something uh, cheesy and stupid like, uh, look, Ma, I'm towing. Okay, so now we have a new algorithm object. 
Uh, we have not changed anything about our original structure. Um, we've just simply added the ability for a vehicle to tow should we want it to. Um, and now this gives us the freedom to implement this at, at several levels. Um, so I want to show you um, the most flexible way of doing things uh, is this here. And that's let's create an override, or excuse me, an overload. Where it accepts an IGO object. Now, just doing this really gives us uh, a lot of flexibility. So we'll say we'll just call the go method of whatever we pass in. So now, if we want the truck to tow, we just say truck go, and we give it a new towing go algorithm and our truck will automatically be able to tow. And there it is. So again we did that, we, we made no changes at all to truck. Um, all we did was add a new algorithm and then um, add an overload in our uh, abstract class uh, to take in a, an IGO object and call its Go interface. Um, which by extension means that you could also make a jet tow if you wanted to. Like, I don't know, like maybe it's one of those signs that tows in the sky, I don't know. You see, it's also able to tow. Um, now, let's say, for instance, you actually don't uh, want that to happen. You don't want that level of flexibility. You just really only want uh, the truck to be able to tow. Then you could uh, just as easily overload the constructor here. And you could say. Uh, You could give it an overload to just take in this type of argument and then set your internal variable. Oops. And that would work. And then in your constructor, you would say new towing go algorithm. That, of course, changes your implementation from I'm driving to I'm towing. And if you get rid of it, it goes back to driving. Um, so again, uh, it's a very flexible pattern. Um, it keeps all of your concerns clearly separated. Um, and then makes extending your object model uh, very very simple it completely detangles the mess that a lot of uh, that we always constantly find ourselves in when extending uh, an object model um, so that's it on the strategy pattern thank you very much